So that kid right there with those glass bottles, he, he dropped one in the grocery store. And when he dropped one in the grocery store, I was literally in mid-thought thinking about how... I was just observing how, like... Again, I'm just going to use the word high. You get all these people who, like, get high on an agenda because they think that their agenda is so important. And um, it's like people just cutting each other off and it's just people are weird. You know, they move real fast and it's just, uh, uh, they're not getting anywhere. You know, there were these people who were moving all super fast and I ended up checking out before they did because I was smart enough to observe which line to go through, you know? And um, anyway, that kid broke the glass bottle because he was in such a hurry to load these bottles and it ends up putting glass all over the ground and everything. The point I'm getting at is, everybody says I'm being like a Debbie Downer, but it's, it's reality. Society uh, is not capable of the self-discipline required to, we're in the van today, we got the van charged up and uh, And uh, anyway, um, society is not, um, they're not, they don't have the self-control. They don't have the self-discipline. Everybody gets in like this agenda and you get all these older people who are, uh, you know, half, not half, but, uh, prescription medicated at minimum. And, uh, sorry, I'm putting some money away in my pocket. And um, it's just, uh... so I put up a link on my Facebook about how the guy who runs Oracle, uh, what's his name, Larry, whatever it is, he um, he's now talking about how AI can be used to cure cancer, kill cancers, identify cancers, and so on and so forth. It's only a matter of time until these guys start talking about immortality. Um, and living longer. But the point is, um, this stuff's absolutely possible. <laughs> and those of you who are like, oh, if it was possible, they would have already done it. Well, what you gotta understand is, there's like, a, in my opinion, your Bible is somewhat literal, and there's gotta be a gatekeeper, uh, kind of like the Highlander, that, that makes sure that there's not people spreading the, the idea of immortality uh, to others because it creates super jealousy could people have figured it out through the ages sure is this intelligent life's first rodeo not necessarily so we're really at a point most people I don't think want to discipline themselves to get in touch with the universe and I know that sounds crazy to those of you who don't do it I don't know what to tell you um, is what it is. Um, and identify why you lose connection, when you lose connection, what caused you to lose connection and self-discipline yourself to say and reflect, self-reflect, listen for the answers and then, aha. Okay. Um, I wanted to read you something. I'll make it in the next video. Um, I got to read it from my other phone. I don't have my other phone with me. But anyway, I want to read you a post that I put up on Facebook. It has to do with invention and self-reflection. Long story short, I had a breakthrough uh, this morning where I asked myself, you know, like the inner dialogue. I'm sitting there asking myself, like, which that gives the universe a chance to communicate with you. Holy Ghost, whatever you want to call it. Um, the ether, whatever you want to call it. So I'm, I'm sitting there asking myself, what is it that uh, you're trying to teach me? And why do I get my judgment clouded sometimes? And why can't I get my patents done? Because when I go to work on my patents, it's all right there. All I got to do is publish it and get it organized. But there's something more to it because some of the patents are really profound. Like for instance, I was like, oh, I'll patent the process for immortality because here's the, uh, or much, much longer life, potentially immortality, because here's the, uh, the, uh, uh, way to kill cancer so you put that in there and then you say here's the way to uh, to you know make sure that your the things that kill cancer don't accidentally kill your heart or your brain or your liver or whatever okay put that in there uh, test that before you give yourself the the 
antidote, okay, if you will, the cure. And then uh, you got to systematically keep checking up on yourself for cancer, but then you turn your telomerase back on, you're back to 20 years old. Like, people don't get this shit. And, um, and they don't get this shit because they're all in a hurry on their foolish agendas, you see? Now, don't get me wrong. There's been plenty of days when I've walked into the grocery store and acted like a fool. But, you know, I'm in a hurry too. But you, you, you start to realize the reason why or I start to realize the reason why I have these thoughts and apparently other people don't is because they're always in that mode. They're always in the, uh, I call it the Adderall mode. They're just, they think that more pro more, uh, of the same process over and over and over is better because they don't understand the law of diminishing returns. Uh, so anyway, so I'm sitting there asking myself, like, what's the problem? And really long story short, it's, it's basically like, look, when you get high on an idea, Brandon, you become foolish with hope that your idea is going to solve your problems, other people's problems. You know, when people invent something, they present it like Steve Jobs, Elon Musk, as here's the, the solution. Here's the solution to a better environment. Here's the electric cars. Here's the solution to, uh, uh, you know, a better life, a, a, a cell phone, whatever. So, so they, they present these solutions. They don't tell you about the negative trade-offs that we're literally holding a microwave in our hands, okay? That 5G is right up against the microwave frequency and the phone also emits microwaves that literally cook your hand and kick, cook, cook your bloodstream and give you cancer that your body then has to defeat. They don't tell you these things. Even when Steve Jobs dies of cancer, he doesn't tell you these things, okay? But, but the point is, um, probably because he was holding the phone in his hand all the time, but, 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 but the phone, but the point is, um, it finally, I guess you could say it dawned on me. We'll just say that because some people take offense to if you say it revealed was revealed to you. Some people would rather me be egotistical and be like, it's all me, me, me. And it finally dawned on me. Okay, fine. We can go down that road. It's all me, 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 even though it's not. Um, and Nikola Tesla and Albert Einstein said the same thing. They realized it wasn't them. It's something else giving them the ideas. But if, um, but if they both had self-discipline, they both believed in a creator. They both believed in trying to make the world a better place, solving problems. But, but the point is, um, when I, if I released these patents and only talked about the goods, I'd be creating another false high. I'd be getting people high on this idea that blah, blah, blah is right around the corner. When in reality, the immortality patent and even these currency patents that I have and, and marketplace patents, they need to be presented with all the negative trade-offs. And it's not even all of them. I can't sit there and pretend that I know them all, but all the negative trade-offs that I can think of need to be thoroughly explained to the masses. And you say, well, why would you do that if you're going to explain the negatives? It's because if I don't explain the negatives and someone else releases the patent and then I pipe up and try to explain the negatives, nobody's going to listen to me because then I'm a nobody. So it finally dawned on me and it was like a resounding yes. It's like, am I supposed to release the patents and talk about the negatives before someone else releases the patents and talks about only the positives? And it was yes. That's all I got. See ya.